So oh. during this recording, it is October 1st, 2nd? 1st. 1st. I don't know. It's the beginning of October. And we have officially been on the road full time for three years. So in this video, we get a lot of questions. Um, now that we've been on the road, people ask us a lot of stuff. But our number one main question I think we've gotten lately is... How, how much does it cost you or how do you do it cheaply? Because I have forever said that I am cheap or consistently frugal, however you want to do it. My stance is I want to spend less money on where I'm staying because let's be real, this is my house and my house will be the same no matter what. It's not like a hotel. Um, I want to be near the things and I want to save money on my stay so that I can spend money out doing fun things. So she never answered the question. What is the, the main question that you well, get so asked? The point there is how do you do it as cheaply as you do or what memberships do you use to do that? So the question is how, now do, you, we'll get to the question. how do you do it without spending a ton of money? And my answer is memberships. And then the question becomes, what memberships do you have and do you use and why and how and all of that? Now, just to let you guys know from the get-go, we are not professionals by any means of this. Oh, God, no. There is a lot of memberships out there. And most of the ones we talk about, you've probably already heard about. Um, so they're pretty easy. But we're going to kind of explain to you the goods and the bads of say, each one of them. Because just like everything, RV life. There's goods and there's bads. You guys always see the goods. There's bads every single week. Sticks and bricks life. There's good and bad in everything, guys. So there's always an upside and there's a downside. So we're going to tell you today about the memberships we use. And we'll give you the good and bad about them. And every membership is not for everybody because, again, it depends on how you RV. And everybody does it a little differently. So we will go over how we do it why it works for us and we'll tell you why it might not work for you because again not the same the same shoe doesn't fit everyone and if you stick around to the end we will talk about something that's not a membership but we'll show you where to camp even cheaper than most of these memberships so there's that too so we'll start off with the first one because right now we are here in new jersey yes uh and we're at a thousand trails so we're going to start off by thousand trails because we've been Probably a thousand trails members, longer than anything else, any other membership we've we have been. And I believe yeah. you know this is our third year full time and our sixteenth year uh, RVN. So I would say twelve years maybe in yeah, thousand probably. trails at least. So every time we've checked that number, it always ends up being longer than we think. So so we were in a thousand trails not too long, I mean five year ago or so, and somebody came up to us and said thank you for showing us Thousand Trails on one of your videos. And thank you, because we signed up. And Lisa went, uh, what does that mean? Is are that good or is that bad? Not? So this guy, and hopefully he's watching, um, <laughs> really kind of put it in perspective for us to understand exactly what you should expect when you come a Thousand Trails. And he said? Well, first he said, it's all about your expectation. If you're expecting a resort, one of those places that you would typically pay a hundred dollars plus per night, Thousand Trails is not that. And I'm explaining that that's definitely where we are right now because we're at we're in New Jersey, at uh, Lake and Shore, Thousand Lake and Trails, Shore. Um, at a resort you would expect to park on concrete or asphalt or something like that. We're basically in sand right here, so every time we come in, we're carrying sand. And not sand like at the beach sand we're going to get stuck. But there's no gravel, there's no pavement, there's no concrete, there's no anything. Um, and and we are here off season. I understand that this is a hip hop in place in the middle of summer because they have a lake, as in the name, here on premise that you can swim, fish, um, you know, whatever. And then it's, I don't know, maybe a 20 minute drive to, to the, shore. the Jersey Shore. So you kind of have the best of both worlds here. If you want to go down to the shore, you can. If you want to stay here and just relax by the pool, they have a pretty intense water park, especially for a thousand trails. Um, lots of slides and stuff. Of course, it's not open right now. And so far, the only drawback we really have is 
that the site is very sandy. Which and it was kind of small too. Our site we had, we had kind of park at angles. Yeah, we had to park at a weird angle. Um, and again, that just depends on what site is available. So is it the end of the world that the site is sandy? No, not at all. And in the summertime, especially, or early spring. But when the water park is still open, when the shore is still open, because we've been over to the shore a couple times now and it's pretty much season's over. So I can see it being a really fun place at that point in time. But this time of year, it's just, I mean, it, the weather, it rained the entire time we we're here. So there's that. Um, but on the sunny days, it's a nice park. It's just uh not a resort by any means and with thousand trails if you expect a resort you're not gonna get that and if you're expecting a state park i think it's a little bit better than that amenity wise um so let's talk about the goods of, of thousand trails because uh, there is there is a handful of goods and a handful of bad so my number one thing that i really like is and and you guys are going to comment below i'm sure but <laughs> Uh, we've been Thousand Trails members for a very long time, and yes, we bought the Elite Connections, and it was whatever amount of money, $10,000, $8,000. I don't even remember it what it is eight. now, but because it's been so long ago. That is paid for, and I don't mean that we paid cash for it. I don't mean that we put it on a credit card, we paid monthly payments, and we paid it off. I mean $8,000 in X amount of years. You, divide, have, you yeah. divide that, and we, we average about $50 a night is what we consider it. You take $8,000 divided by $50, and i am not going to do the math. Now we've already done it, um, but <laughs> we've stayed. For itself. We have stayed in Thousand Trails enough to pay for that out front. So that is done. That's out of the question. We don't pay for it anymore. Now we pay approximately six hundred dollars a year in membership dues. Um, that's all we have to pay six hundred dollars. So, and that that number can go up. Um, somebody will call me out if I'm wrong, and that's fine. I believe the number is sixty two. So our membership is in our names. So at the point in time which one of us turns 62 first, our dues, whatever the whatever the rate at that time for the for your annual dues is, they will freeze at that. So if you're near 62 or you're already 62 and you buy a membership, your annual dues will lock in at whatever they are the day you sign up. So back to the six about to, back to about the six hundred dollars now. And like I said, math is not my strongest thing unless I have a calculator in front of me. If we stay in the Thousand Trails Network, which we can do for 365 days. Let's just say for simple math, it would be under $5 a night. It's way under that. But no, I it's way under that. So I three, haven't done the numbers recently. 360, a couple a 365 night. days at $600 is, le is, is less than $2 a night. There you go. So if you stay in the Thousand Trails Network, it's less than $2. You can't harvest host for that. You can't Passport America for that. You can't do anything for that. And we have full hookup sewer water, 50 amp for $2 a day. Now... That's if you stay in the Thousand Trails Network every single time. So we can stay, most, some, most parks we can stay, what, 21 days? Some, day, some parks we can stay 14. So we can bounce 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. And that is the membership we have. There is a membership where you cannot do that. There is a membership, a zone pass, um, where you sign up each year and you get a quadrant of the U.S. I think there's five different zones you can pick from. And those people... Um, can stay up to 14 days in a park, but then they have to be out for seven days. I think the number is if you stay at a park longer than four days, you have to be out for at least seven days. So that would be a membership um, more so for people that are just kind of staying near home and want to be able to come on the weekends or whatever. They could do that without any issues. Ours is the bigger, more expensive membership. And so our rules are a little different. We can go from Thousand Trails to Thousand Trails Park without any break in between. So, so. that is my favorite thing about the Thousand Trails is the price. If we stay. Now, you know, as we travel across the world, we've been 100,000 miles in three years. We don't stay on Thousand Trails every time. So that number kind of goes up. So we're probably about seven, eight, nine, ten dollars 10 dollars a yeah. night. So here's the thing. I feel like... Most Thousand Trails parks, amenity-wise, and when I say amenity, I mean full hookup. Um, and most of them do have a pool and like a mini golf. Some of them have pickle. A lot of them have pickleball. Some of them have tennis courts. There's that activities kind of thing. at all of them. They don't have like if you go to a state park, you're going to get a lot of hiking trails or biking trails. You're typically not going to see a lot of those at Thousand Trails. Some of them do have them, but not all of them. However, 
and I'm going to base this off of Virginia because that's home base and that's where we've typically stayed in state parks. They're anyway, anywhere from $30 to $40 a night for like a, a state park or a Corps engineer. The majority of the ones in Virginia, so don't call me out about another state, that number is going to include water and electric. There are a couple that have a full hookup, but most of them it's water and electric only. At Thousand Trails, we can usually, they there are water electric only sites but we typically get a full hookup site. So if you're doing some math there, even at $35 for a, a state park, and even if we don't thousand trails every day, we are still nowhere near paying $35 a night and we have a full hookup. So again, back to expectations. It's not a resort. If you're expecting that, it's not that. If it dry camping, it's not that. It's in between. And for, you know, a couple bucks a night, Dollar for dollar, it's. I think it's probably one of the best gigs going for what you get for your money. So that was one of the good things. And I'm going to kind of tell you, she got long-winded there, but one of the bad things is most parks are still first come from serve. First come, first serve, which is great for us at 45 foot. Because sometimes, no, let's back that up. It can the be parks great. are first come first serve. Yeah, it can be great. You can you, if you need a spot that you need your Starlink to be able to reach. You need be, you want to be in trees. You want to be out of trees. You can park wherever you want. It's not like a campground when they tell you that you're in B three thirty three. That also means you can't say I want to be in B thirty three ahead of time and reserve that spot. It does not work that but way. But the problem with us coming in at forty five foot would be, and here's the negative, that there's a pop up in a spot that's sixty foot long. And there is a, and I need that spot for 45 feet. And the only spot I have is down the road. It's super, super tight, kind of like we're in here now. I get it and I understand for all you guys that have the smaller RVs, we did pick the larger RV. I get that, I understand that. And I understand first come, first serve, and I agree with first come, first serve. That's the one negative it is when you go to a, when you go to a private park, you have to put all your slides in, how long you are, and all that kind of stuff, and they give you a spot for those areas, for the, that that. Camper. your requirements um so that's the one negative about it i know they're they're thinking about changing it to make it so and this is kind of what i like you tell them how big you are and they give you a couple places to choose from which is nice um for us i will say most of the parks will do that nowadays um especially the parks that are busier when you get there they will kind of say like here are five or six sites that are like really big that you should not have any problem getting into sometimes they can tell you whether they're open or not sometimes not and again if it's like a high use park a lot of the times when you get to that park they may have already saved a spot for you because they only have maybe three sites that are big enough to hold a 45 foot rig so when you get there they're going to have already assigned you a site which is allowed um, based on that the park can make their own rules and if it's a high use park different rules apply and we appreciate that i appreciate if i get there especially you know some travel days are not great and when you get there you just want to park and the thought of having to drive around and bob and weave and look for a spot you can get into is even more exhausting and so if they say hey we've got you in b18 it's the biggest site we have you're going to fit beautifully it's going to be great and you go and just pull in or back in real quick that's awesome so would we sign up for Thousand Trails again today if we needed to start all over again? Absolutely. The answer would be yes. And I try to tell people if you ever, and I guess I'll tell you that at the end, but yes, we would, we will sign up for <laughs> Thousand Trails again. Um, we will have links to all of the membership that we use in the description below. So if you guys are wanting to get any of that, then you can. If you have questions, you can email us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to tell you the truth on, on the memberships we have. But yes, we would get Thousand Trails again. I don't think it's a perfect thing but, no, it works. but i don't think anything's perfect right and i will say again like he just said we'll have a link in the description um the 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 people we bought our membership for from no longer work for thousand trails that that was years and years ago however jim and brandy renault is who we recommend because we know them personally and i don't feel that they're salesy salespeople, I feel like they're honest. And, you know, we've talked about upgrading our membership and we've discussed with them what we want, what we want out of our membership. And not just we say, it's not worth the money for me yet. They'll tell me that. Like for what, the way you're using it, it's not worth it yet for you to spend the extra money to upgrade. And I appreciate that as a consumer. So that is why we recommend them. So their information will be below in the description. So our next membership, 
is Passport America. So I'm going to give you, the, right off the bat, I'm going to give you the good for this one. It's 50% camp. Half free, price. It's half price camping. So if the site is $70, you're paying $35. If the site is $20, you're paying $10. You get the idea how the numbers work here. It's very easy. So we love it for that. So when we can't find a thousand trails and we're traveling across the United States, we're going up and down wherever we're going, we look for a Passport America um, to save that 50%. The downside about Passport America is... There are a lot of blackout dates. A lot dates. of blackout dates. Um, maybe not dates, but the, it may be that Passport America discount is only available Monday through Thursday. Or we stayed at a park out near Sturgis two years ago? Last year? I don't know. Um, and the weekend we were there was the weekend before the week before Sturgis. So the Passport America discount was not valid the week before or the week of, I think, or maybe even the week after Sturgis. So we just happened to get in like the two days before that restriction was there. Um, and I think we paid like $10 a night. The other thing about Passport America is you're not going to get a full week. So if you're coming somewhere for a whole week, I don't believe you can get a week. You, I think it's only a certain couple of days. Well, so, but if it was like the discount was only good Monday through Thursday, you could, would get that discounted rate Monday through Thursday, and then you would pay full price Friday, Friday and Saturday. That's that you can combine it. Um, so there are a lot of places out there that if you're only looking for a couple of days, we use it a lot when we're going from a thousand trails to a thousand trails, but that's too long of a drive. We just need a, a, an overnighter in the middle. And let's be real, I, I feel better about <clears throat> staying at a Passport America one night overnight than I would be, I would be more comfortable there than in a Walmart parking lot. Nothing against a Walmart parking lot, I'm just saying I feel a little more comfortable there. And if, you know, it's only 10 to $20 for one night, I'd rather spend the money. So that's the that. only negative I think I have a Passport America is that they're blackout dates. You can't just call them, hey, hey I'm a Passport America, like like Good Sam's or something. Hey, I'm a Passport America membership. I want my 50% off. I'm going to stay here three weeks. Um, we did we did learn something pretty neat about Passport America on accident. We were traveling from boondocking for a lot, a lot of times, and we needed to dump tanks. And Lisa found they loves, and I don't even know where we were then, but... Nebraska. Nebraska. So she found a love. She said, we pull into loves. It'll cost us $10 to dump our tanks and we can dump in and we can go on down the road and do what we need to do. Well, when we got to Love, she just happened to pull the Passport America app up and there was a Passport America campground three miles down the road. Yeah, it was right there. So it cost $10 to dump it at, at Love's and the Passport America was $10, $10 a night. And that was with 50 was a full hookup. 50 water, full hookup. sewer, and everything. <laughs> so $10 to dump or $10 right there to the dump, dump, flush, fill refill. Everything have AC all night, all the things. So um, that was a win-win for us. We went in there and we dumped. We we were able to relax for a little bit. We were able to run all of our power again for $10, which is the same thing. So, And let me throw a quick plug in about Passport America real quick. I cannot quote you the prices off the top of my head, but there is like a one-year, a three-year. I wasn't or... telling them that yet. Okay, we'll come back to that later. But okay. Keep that in mind. We'll tell them because we're done with Passport America. I just wanted to see what you guys <laughs> would say. So... There is a lifetime membership right now out there, so it's really it's a hell of hell, hell of a deal. You you pay for your membership, your one time membership. I think it's two hundred forty nine dollars. Well, I, th I think it was two ninety nine at Hershey at the show. That was the show's show price. But even even if it was a little more than that, I think it's still a deal online right now. But we heard from a reliable source. Yes. End of end of twenty twenty three, the lifetime membership goes away. Gone. So if if, if, and, and one trip across the U.S., our Passport America membership saved us enough to pay for our annual mem or our, our lifetime membership. So think about $299, that's $300. $50, $100, $150, $2, $250, $300. Yeah, so it's like 250 3 you pay for that yeah. lifetime. So, you know, and, and I will also say that kind of like Thousand Trails, all parks are not created equal. So there are some that are literally pull through site, but literally just pull in and park for the night. That's all it is. There's no pool. There's no, there's, there's nothing. It's just sites all the way up to the Grand Canyon railroad railway. Um, it's a big hotel thing in, uh, Williams, Arizona that has a train that like they can a take nice you. Park. Yeah. And they have a campground. It's a really nice park and it's a Passport America. Blackout dates, but when we were there, it just happened to be the right time of the year and we got to stay there for half price. That alone would have paid for our, our membership. So 
If you have a Passport America that you're paying like annually or you've been thinking about getting one, I would recommend just go ahead now, quickly get in and get the lifetime membership because it's going to end gonna up be being over. the best thing and they're not going to have it. And make sure you stick to the end because I have a tip about all these things at the end. So it's what I tell everybody. So if you already know us, you know what I'm going to say, but you got to wait to the end. So Passport America, I think it's a win. $299, if it's $299, $249, whatever the magic price is, it's a win. So we're going to keep our passport in America now. We're, we're lifetime. We're lifetime. So, we're so that's, that. that's so, a done deal. So our next one is kind of like one of our favorite ones, and it's Harvest Hosts. So we do a lot of Harvest Hosts, and Harvest Host is very, very reasonably priced. It is. The membership is, I think... We don't know a lot of these prices you because know, it's, it's been hard. so long. So. Well, we have a discount code, um, but I, I want to say $79. And I that's think just that's, for harvesters. That might that's be, not with, right, welcome, that might be that. with the discount code. Um, they also offer add-ons to include golf courses and for Boondockers Welcome. They have a camp pass. They have a bunch of different things that they've They're added to more, their more network. Things now. Um, but at $79, the... The good thing is for us that you get to go see lots of cool places. They're just one night stops along the way. So again, from going from a thousand trails to a thousand trails, um, Harvest Host and Passport America are both things that I will look at in that mid area where I need to stop because we get to visit wineries, uh, museums, farms like alpaca farms or vegetable farms, uh, buffalo farms. First of, all, first of all, with our toy hauler with the deck down, if we get to a nice location in, in a Harvest Host, the views are, are amazing. Because most campgrounds, you're not going to see that cow roaming the back. Mm -hmm. You're not going to look outside and see the, the, the great fields layered down the hill. You're not going to see, we, we stayed in one in West Virginia that was all the way on top of the hill. We can actually see the West Virginia State Fair yeah, all the way down us. the bottom of the hill. You're not going to see that in the campground because usually there's campers around you, trees around you, and all that kind of stuff. So we even stayed at a vegetable farm. Like it was a like a farm stand is what it started as, and then it's a building, and they have fresh donuts and they have all the produce, but they grow corn and they this have time of the year right now in corn October corn maze in the fall. Now when we were there, they were still pulling fresh corn out. It was that season, but he was able to get his drone up and you could like see the whole corn maze because it's planted that way. So that in the fall when they do the maze, everything is set up and it was so cool. But it's one of those things, if we were staying in a campground instead of at a Harvest Host, we'd have never seen it. So um, the, the ask if you're a Harvest Host member is that you spend at least $30 at your stay. So Yes, that is, that is more expensive than staying in a Passport America. However, here's how I like to look at it. Um, first of all, a lot of times it'll be like at a restaurant or a winery or a distillery or a brewery and they will serve food. They will have a restaurant there. So we're going to eat anyway. We just use our $30 contribution to them to buy our dinner. Or if there's someone that I would be buying a gift for, a Christmas gift, a birthday gift, an anniversary gift for one of the kids, somebody in my family. So for instance, if it's somebody that drinks wine... It's really cool that if I'm in South Dakota and there's this winery, I can pick them up a bottle of wine from there. That's something they're not going to find at home, and it's something that I would spend money to buy them a gift anyway. So it's just kind of a cool, unique gift to buy for people. So I have a little place in the RV that I store things that I pick up at Harvest Host as Christmas gifts and birthday gifts for people um, back home that I know I'm going to buy a gift for anyway. And then I feel like I'm not really spending extra money to stay there. And that's the two things we hear about Harvest Host the most. If it's free to stay, why am I paying $30? Well, you're helping the host because we have found out by a lot of our hosts that during COVID, that was the only thing that's kept those those people, our small businesses, alive. So yes, you got the wine drinkers and all that that don't, that don't camp or don't go to Harvest Host. Harvest Host is helping them stay afloat. Um, <clears throat> so we like it for that reason. Um, yes, it's $30, but we are helping them. The next question we get is a lot of times, I don't drink wine and I don't drink beer, so why would I sign up for Harvest Host because it's wineries and distilleries? It's, it's not more just, than that. just that. We are getting ready to host our camp out <laughs> in this weekend uh, right. it's at Sutler's Post, um, Clydesdale Farm. 
So again, that has nothing to do with alcohol. It has nothing, mm -hmm. maybe the Budweiser horses, but, that, that's, but they're, they're not, not there. They're not so. technically the Budweiser <clears throat> horses. So, so it's just a farm. It's a horse farm. So it's and a farm. Their and contribution it, helps them stay. Yes, they have they have shirts and they have hoodies and all that kind of stuff that you can go in and purchase stuff, and then they can do a tour that they charge you to take a tour through there. So we've stayed at the Sutler's Post. We've stayed at Alpaca Farm, so you can get alpaca gloves, scarves, shirts, all that kind of stuff. We've stayed at. A beef farm so you can get steaks and all that you know steaks and we stayed at a farm hamburger. in pennsylvania that had beef and then she also had fresh <laughs> eggs um and i think i want to say candles i know that sounds kind of crazy but i think that was because they have bees maybe they use the wax for that they also had honey uh i don't know they had kind of an assortment of things and then the produce the produce farm that had the corn maze they had all kinds of fresh produce jams jellies donuts um, and we're leaving here tomorrow and we're going to go to a shooting range. So we're parking in a parking lot that's a shooting range. So you can take your guns in or rent guns and you can you can shoot there. Um, and you can you can take a class. I, I would assume you'd have to schedule it to be there on the right day. But they do offer like you could sign up for a class for your concealed carry permit, that kind of thing. Specific to that, it's in Delaware and I think they could they could give you your concealed carry for Maryland and Delaware. Um, but outside of that, no. So bottom line is it's not just people want to drink. It's all right. kinds of different things. So don't get caught up thinking that it's not free because you have to spend something. You're, you're helping a local business out. And there's a lot of restaurants. Too. There's a lot of different things out there. So And when I was planning the crawl for next year, if you haven't heard about it, you should check that out. Um, I found one of the Harvest hosts was like a family entertainment place they had mini golf go-karts um maybe like was zipline yeah and then i found a couple recently and he doesn't know this yet but i just scheduled one for a few weeks from now so you guys are learning something i don't drive know drive-in like a, a drive-in movie theater well that'd be um, cool if i'm back to camp so yeah how cool is that there? gonna be but anyway so i could go on and on about harvest host because i love it they also have many other options um, the golf courses, which we have not checked out yet. And we still have not done Boondockers Welcome yet. And I, know I buy we've Boondockers about this Welcome every year. And this one, I cannot get him on board. But I do have friends that have stated a couple that recommend them. So maybe I should start out finding out where those are and try to plan a trip so that he can get his feet wet at one that he knows will be okay. So yes, we're going to go back to Passport America. <laughs> we would definitely, 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 before the end of the year, get your lifetime membership for Passport America. Mm -hmm. 110% we would do Harvest Host. Absolutely. So yes, that would be a great one. And, 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 the, and these memberships aren't, the first one is, but these two other memberships aren't that really expensive. expensive. So, um, there is one other one that I will talk about. I don't know that you were planning to or not. Um, and that is Good Sam's. Uh, well, that was my next one. Okay. So typically we stay in Thousand Trails Parks and or Harvest Host or Passport America, which we have already said. What that means is typically I don't stay at a lot of parks where I can use my Good Sam's discount. So I have been known to let that particular membership lapse. We'll, we'll, we'll put two of these together. KOA, well, KOA, KOA and Good Sam's KOA are about the same Good thing. Sam's are about the same. I will let them lapse unless I know I'm going to stay at one of those parks. Um, because KOA, one stay. So even if you let your, your thing, your membership with them lapse, you can re-sign anytime you want and it's good for a year. Maybe you can make it two or three years. Um, I always just get a year. And so if like we have friends that, hey, we're going to go to this KOA. Y'all should meet up. We should go together. Okay, that'll be a splurge for me because I don't typically spend the money on that. But nine times out of ten, if you stay more than a weekend the 10% that you save pays for your membership. And then if you stay at a KOA later in the year, you're getting your 10% off, which isn't a lot, but it's enough. Like it pays for taxes, most places. And then a little extra. Um, the biggest difference in the KOA rewards and the Good Sam's membership is Good Sam's is going to save you money at Flying J and Pilots and or, um, and it's, it's cents per gallon. I'm not sure the exact number, but that is a good reason to have the Good Sam's if you are a pilot or a Flying J. If that's your fuel stop of choice, that's going to save you money there. And you also can get a discount at Camping World. So if you buy 
anything you need. Yeah, anything. Sewer chairs, hoses or yeah. chairs or whatever it is, you get a discount. You get a the discount one. there too. So depending on your spending habits at those two places, it may or may not be beneficial for you to get the good Sam's. So I told you I was going to tell you a tip or trick or whatever it is near the end. Well, we're not done yet, but I want to at least let you guys know because it's in my head right now. People ask me all the time about these memberships. And what I tell people is while you're working, before you go full time, buy that stuff. Buy it while you're working. You still, you're, you're still getting your income. Get the thousand trails. Use it, test it, try it, play with it, see how it works. Buy the lifetime membership for Passport America. Once you pay it, it's done. Get all that stuff while you're working before you hit the road full time because and before you're living on a retirement income yes. because at that point because once it's paid for, it's paid for. Yeah, your your lifetime memberships would be paid. So that's most of the memberships that we use every single day. We did have another tip for you guys at the end. Um, and we want to kind of explain to you because we're trying to give you cheaper ways to RV and cheaper ways to camp. She's looking at me funny right now because she probably has no idea where I I'm going. I do know with, what but, he's going to say. So, you know, Lisa's frugal and we try to find these places. So, you know, you can boondock. You can go out west. A lot of places out west you can boondock. But people go, where do I know where to boondock? How do I go to boondock? Can I just pull off the road and just sleep right here? Do I need to go here? How do you boondock? Um, and one of the best sites that we can, we've can we ever found is... Well, there's two. So free okay, camp, two. free I'm camp sites, freecampsites.net is a good place, and Campendium is also a good place um, to find the cheap place. BLM uh, Bureau of Land Management is predominantly. I shouldn't say that they host a lot of the land out west. Um, so you can go to their site. I find it to be a little confusing because the maps seem a bit antiquated for me. So. Um, there's that, but on Campendium, a lot of times it will be, have a BLM location, BLM location um, that you can camp out. And a lot of the BLM spots are free. Some of them, depending on the area and depending on, like some of them have like water and dump stations there that you can come out to a certain location and dump and, and refill. Um, I, I don't know how much those cost, but I know you can just buy a, buy pass, a pass or whatever. Somebody told me uh, recently... I think they got one that was like good for November through April or something, and it was like 180 bucks. So you figure you're not paying for anything else. That's not a bad gig. And they have water and a dump station. What you don't have is electric. So you either have to have a generator or solar or both. Um, or just open your doors and hope for the best. But if you have either of those things and you want to stay somewhere for free, where the views are absolutely amazing, BLM land Don't and forget, boondocking is also a great option. Do your research on any boondocking location, BLM lands, any of that kind of stuff. Read the reviews. Read everything you can possibly read about. Don't just say, oh, I want to go here, so I'm going there. It if may you, be a muddy road on the way in. Or you're 45 you foot make. long and you can't get there. Yeah. So read it. Check the pictures. We try to post pictures so you guys can see it also. If I can get my rig in, most people can get theirs in. So Try to read the reviews. If it says you can't, we parked there in a 20-foot van. We parked there in a 5-foot car. We parked there in a travel trailer that's 18-foot long. And they may say we saw somebody come up on a big fifth wheel and they had to turn around. Read the reviews so you don't get stuck out there because it's, sometimes it's dicey. Something else a lot of them will leave on their reviews or a lot of compendium and freecampsites.net. I know both will have cell service so people will comment we have we have AT&T and we had perfect coverage or we have Verizon and we had nothing um so that's a good thing to pay attention to especially if you, if you need cell service if you're needing to work or you know whatever if you need that it's it's listed on both of the The reason sites. we know that we were boondocking in Sedona, Arizona and we needed work that day and Lisa was trying to work and there was absolutely nothing. no signal so we said it's no problem. We'll go to Sedona and we'll go to the Starbucks and we'll upload what we need to do and work we need. Their Wi-Fi was down. Uh-oh. Now we're in trouble. <laughs> so we didn't do our research. So try to do your research. Try to remember what you need. Will I fit? Will it get muddy? Will Is there cell service if I need cell service? Whatever you need when you're, when you're camping, make sure you check that out. So there's a couple of them, a couple of the memberships that we use. Uh, like I said, next week we're going to try to talk a little bit more about programs that we use and other things to help save money because let's face it, we all want to save money when we're out here on the road. Next so. week's going to be about saving money on the road and planning and traveling safely. 
um, and how we do that. And Our planning has changed that. a lot in the last three years. It has. It, it has. Lisa, but used, I still... you, Lisa used to have a whole year's planned. And now we have Every time I do here, that, there, you know, here. life happens and it has to change. So I'm not so great about going that far out. But I do have a couple of pieces in my arsenal that I use to get us there on the most RV safe route and to navigate my fuel stops in the way, along the way, and to save money at those fuel stops. So we'll talk about that next week. So these videos are helping you guys. Hopefully they're helping you because we're trying to show you guys what we hear and see out here mm -hmm. um, when we're out here every single day. I'm trying to save you guys some money. Um, so if you're liking these, please make sure you give us those thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button below. Um, make sure you ring the bell because if you don't ring the bell, you won't know when we put the next video out. And you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it because we're trying to save you money. We're trying <laughs> to help you guys. So remember, we have caravans coming up. Uh, we have campouts, uh, campouts coming, up. coming up. We have four campouts scheduled for next year. We're going to start posting on our Facebook pages, our, um, our website, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to come visit us at some of these campouts, a lot of these campouts, we give away some of these free members, these memberships for free. Yeah. Um, so make sure you follow us along. If you see us out in the campground, make sure you wave, say hi. If you see us at a boondockers place, we might hide from you. Just send If you see us outside, <laughs> absolutely say hi. Do not avoid us, please speak. Um, if it's something that we need to get done and we, we don't have time to be social because we're working, we will stay inside. So if we're outside, feel free to stop and say hey, or just wave when you're going by. It's always cool to meet all kinds of people, but especially people that watch us and follow us and kind of know our story. So hopefully the, these videos are helping you guys because that's what it's all about. And until you guys find us saving money at some kind of fuel park, stop, fuel stop, park, <laughs> campground, whatever it is, safe travels y'all.